Today I'm watching Peaky Blinders Season 5, Episode 5. Episode 4 ended with that cliffhanger of Linda being shot, so I'm very worried to see what's going to be happening with her. I'm not hopeful, but I guess we will find out. Please no spoilers. In the last episode we saw Tommy has started this deal with the Chinese moving opium, so we've added another element into the mix. Now we've got Mosley, the Billy Boys, and the Chinese, so I'm very curious to see what the last few episodes of the season will be. Mr. Gold proposed to Polly and she said yes so they're now engaged so maybe we'll have a wedding at the end of this season I'm not too sure if there'll be a big party or if it'll just be you know sign some documents type of thing I'm really enjoying this season and I'm very anxious to see what the next few episodes will be about I know it's a short season but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me if you have any other suggestions for tv shows you think I should watch please comment below and if you want to have a say in what movies or tv shows I watch be sure to join patreon and as always please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, and check back often for more awesome content. Okay, continuing right at the same night of. Okay, I was wondering if they were going to do a time jump or anything. Oh, God! Uh, oh, oh. Well, she's still alive, that's for sure. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh. Oh, shot in the arm. Okay, maybe she'll make it after all. I used a derringer. Shh. Still in there. Oh, God. Well. Get him out. <clears throat> Mr. Shelby, on this. Get out. Yeah, exactly. This was really asking there, bud. No, it's really gonna hurt. Come on. Shoot. Oh, God. Literally digging a bullet out of somebody. Oh, my God. That was just the squishing sounds. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah, just pour some alcohol on that. That's gonna friggin' kill. Oh my god. But at least you won't get an infection. She's gonna be alright, Tom. She's gonna be alright, Tom. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be much worse. I thought it was gonna be cut to like Linda's funeral or something. Go to the library. Get some opium. Go on. She'll be fine. Go some. I can't imagine Arthur what he would do if Polly shot Linda and Linda dies. That would be that's what I thought happened, but Congratulations, Paul. Okay, so Polly didn't know that he was gonna propose. Even the pain in your head. All right, here you go, drink. Yeah, so Tommy just leveraged this proposal with Mr. Gold for his own business dealings, obviously. Which we saw, like, he's arranged marriages before, so... Oh, Thomas. We need you. All right? You understand? Yeah. Abadama wants you as best man. Aww. <laughs> I saved his life. He hugs him. <laughs> Paul, he's like, where's my hug? To the musicians and the dance company for your wonderful performance. Yeah. Shouldn't Tommy be giving this speech? People gathered here. English people in the very heart of England. Why do I feel like this is going to take a very Aryan turn? Betrayed us all. I have known that the change is coming. Yeah, Mosley's just using this literal stage as a platform to turn this audience into his, you know, future supporters. ...of the moment. And our host is such a man. Yeah, now he's put Tommy on the spot and he's like, okay, well, now you have to support everything I say. This moment on this stage is because I have some news. Is that you're an egomaniac? In England. And Mr. Shelby will be with me, shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, and now he's like, Tommy can't back out now. Not that he could before, but now it's publicly been announced. They, they run an international system in which the infinite mobility of money, its capacity. This episode's gonna make me angry. They are the ones who took your money, but it is- I Did not like that arm gesture. This truth. Who will light a flame the atheists cannot extinguish? Yeah, he's just saying that the stock market crash, he's blaming it on the Jews. And he's like, well, you know, we were prospering until, you know, all these Jewish money came in, and now look where we are, and. Ah! And marches on! I hate it! I hate it! Because I believe it is in places like this with people like you. People like you. Our message can be summarized with these words. Britain first. Basically, if you don't look like us, then we don't want you here. Ah, I hate it so much. It's too accurate for this time. Be the birth of a new political party, which will speak for you. It'll be one nobody will forget, that's for sure. 
Not in a good way. The British Union of Fascists. Yeah. <laughs> terrifying, terrifying. Just fear mongering. Don't trust the newspapers. Don't trust Jewish people. Don't, you know, oh my God. Only trust people that look like you, basically. What the f are you doing dealing with a man like that? Yep, thank you. Where's his line? Somebody go and tell her to come to my room. How do you know she'll come? Don't leave that alone. Things like tonight. It was a great performance. I hate to say it, but he did a great job of being despicable. So did you learn anything from my speech tonight? Yeah, we learned you're an anti-Semit, um, that you're also probably really racist. Religion was a beast, but it's dead. Oh, that's such a cool shot, having his reflection on the table. In return for what? No return. Tommy, what are you gonna do? Please understand what I'm offering you as we go forward, Mr. Shelby. You're not offering him anything, you're just taking things away. Dollars safe in Switzerland and access to every dirty-minded swan in England. Have I mentioned that I hate Mosley? Because I most definitely do. Drink less. I'm very surprised Tommy is like... I'm not surprised he's not seeing anything, but I'm very curious to see what his plan is. He's not one to just take things sitting down and this isn't a fair, this isn't like a partnership. He just has to do exactly what Mosley tells him to do. And right now it's just Tommy's losing and losing and doing things he doesn't want to do and getting nothing back. Oh my. True narcissist staring at himself in the mirror while he's having sex. If he could have sex with himself, he probably would. And I don't mean, you, you know what I mean. Rina and I were wondering whether perhaps you might want to join us. Get lost. Kick rocks. Tommy. I hope Mr. Mosley doesn't make it to a season six. Tommy, I swear to God you're bad. That man is evil. Is he? Tommy says he's the devil and he's not wrong. You're doing it because you think somebody should stop him. Oh, I, saw your I hope so, because he's a monster. You see things in my face. I still want things that feel nice. Yeah, he's like, I don't want people to be able to see my emotions on my face. I want to be able to have a permanent poker face, basically. Why? You and me. Any destination. She's mentioned this before, and he's always hesitated, so... We leave this place. We never come back, Linda. Has Arthur finally had enough? I'm glad I didn't shoot you. I think he wishes you had, but... It would have been a kindness. Oh, God. <sighs> Probably, yeah. That's horrible to say, but... I'll get out. She's like, I'm glad you saved me, but I don't forgive you. <sighs> Arthur, you should have left when you had the chance, man. Now you can't. It's too late. <laughs> Bye, Linda. I don't think she's coming back. Sorry, Arthur. How long before he turns in Tommy and uh, the Shelby gang for their lineage? The direct evidence of a link between Mosley and the head of an organized criminal network. Yes, he is using his proof. But will not show their hand until the organization is announced officially. I love these lamps, by the way. Seeing resistance from my superior officers, too. Oh? Resistance to what? No. As a result, my six-monthly review was unfavorable. Oh, shoot. They're talking about moving me to a black and colored desk in Johannesburg. Oh, my gosh. My superiors also ask why the information on Jesse Eden and the communists has apparently dried up. Because he's now switching to the fascist party. Always hopeful. Therefore, they are always... Yeah, and if Younger's out, then what's Tommy doing this for? Like, if he's not reporting back to the British government, then is it just for his own personal vendetta against Mosley? Like, because Mosley is a monster that needs to be stopped. <gasps> Jeez. Oh, my heart. Something's gonna happen. We've been in this shop for too long. Why are we watching him in his car? I'm very nervous. Oh 
my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, no. And the kid's playing outside too. Bye, Ben. And he had the check and everything. Oh my god, this is horrible. Jeez, I knew something was gonna happen. We were staring at that shot for far too long. Look at me. Oh, these little kids. Oh my gosh. Ada's gonna be just. Oh my god. Now, what's Tommy gonna do? Oh, poor Ben. It's awful. Poor kids. Ben Younger is dead. Someone put a bomb in his car. Poor Ada. Which means anyone any of us touch. He never knew I was pregnant. Oh gosh. It will go down as an IRA assassination of a British military officer. I don't, I don't know if that's true. Yeah, exactly. And as a result, Section D or the branch or intelligence had him killed. I don't know about the Section D. If I just look to what I'll do, he'd still be kicking a ball in the street. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Tommy blames himself, obviously. <sighs> yeah, I wonder, what's Tommy gonna do now? Is he still gonna work with Mosley? What is he gonna do? Because if he's not reporting back to anybody, and it sounded like even Ben was on, like, the way out, basically, and... Oh, this opium. No, 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 no. <sighs> he sees Grace whenever he- yeah, exactly. The ghost of Grace is telling him to, uh, unalive himself. Yeah, and like, what if his car had been rigged? Oh, that's terrifying. Right, there's your lanterns. Where the f Chinese? I feel like this is a trap. Oh, it's Chinese. <gasps> Yep, it's a trap. It's a trap. Oh, God. Oh, I was a f***ing cable soldier, so... Ah! Oh, God. Arthur's got a machine gun. Yeah, the Irish are trying to take the opium? Oh, my God. Just chaos. Just a sea of bullets. Well, I am calm. I am calm, Mamarama. Yeah, someone knew they were coming, obviously. Oh. Arthur's like, rage. He's like, yeah, bring it on. Like, bring on as many enemies as you can. I'll take them out. I'm not worried about dying. Like, I fuel off this violence, obviously, so... Oh, for the little boy, his name was Peter. Like you. Do we know how old Charlie is? I'm wondering if they would be around the same age. Don't walk away. Either we know Tommy's had close calls losing Charlie, so I'm sure as a parent this just like hurts extra hard. Oh my gosh. I need to search you for items that could potentially be used as weapons against you. An asylum? What is he doing here? Danny's like the first person that comes to mind, but we know he's dead, so... And that's because he was just struggling with PTSD. The letters you sent, Sergeant Major. Yeah, hey, Arthur mostly writes them. I just, just signed them. Obviously, someone he knew from the war. Is he right back. Just teeth. No, they stick the pen up my ass. Hello. Because one day things might change. Oh, so hopeful. Yeah. Things might change. Yeah, and just the framing of having Tommy's face in between these bars. Oh, gosh. What do you have? What does Tommy want with Barney? <clears throat> Come here. Oh, that's such a cool shot. No, but in our company, never missed. I can use that man. Is he going to take out Mosley? Oh, don't keep track of those, Tom. Don't have to. And you know, that will be Wednesday, because they be a big fuck. Yeah, I imagine it'd be hard to keep track of any sort of time passing in that padded cell in the dark. General. My only guess is that it's Mosley, because he knows what a monster Mosley is, and Ben's gone now. Must be Wednesday, here we go, he's breaking Barney out. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and just the shot from below to make Tommy look just even more powerful and menacing. I hear you agreed to give up the North. Didn't really agree, didn't have a choice. The most competent organizer of men in the South is Alfie Solomons. <laughs> but Alfie's dead, yeah. Should end and the whistle blew. Good. He's in the mood for a quarrel. That is very true indeed, yeah. He's in, definitely in fighting mood, holding his machine gun. <sighs> and the beat, they all said I was mad to take me dad with me, eh? Your dad? Imagine that. Said if he sees Billy Boy here, he'll go to the throat. Yep, that makes sense. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, someday. Yeah. Yeah. Arthur's like, let me at him, let me at him. I want to get him. Barney Thompson. Gonna kill Oswald Mosley. Yes, I knew it. While he's on stage, while I'm stood next to him. That's bold. Busy a few weeks, brother. Yeah. On stage next to Tommy. Like, you have to trust that man's aim. You're right next to him. And then Tommy's gonna take over as the leader of the fascist party. So that was my first time watching Peaky Blinders season five, episode five. Only one more episode to go and I'm very curious to see what's gonna happen. We found out Linda was okay. She was shot in the arm, but it sounds like her and Arthur are done. He offered, you know, like, let's get out of here. You know, you've suggested let's leave before. And now he's like actually willing to do it. But Linda's not there. She's like, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Basically, we're done. So she gets in the car and leaves. I don't know if she would even be in the next episode. I obviously don't know if she would be in the next season. But yeah, I'm very curious to see if her character would come back into play at some point. Obviously, her and Arthur also have a child together. So possibly, but it doesn't seem like she has any interest in romantically being linked to Arthur anymore. It was heartbreaking to see that scene between them because Arthur I feel like would have just gone on to even more of a spiral if Linda had in fact died like I can't even imagine the same thing when Tommy lost Grace I feel like that's what how it would affect Arthur it would just be so devastating and he's already you know out of control so I'd be terrified to see what would happen to him if Linda had passed away but just the way she was talking to him and it was just heartbreaking when she says you know I'm glad I didn't kill you and he kind of smiles and then she follows it up with oh because it would have been a kindness and I think you know a worst fate for you is to be alive and to live in your head with all these thoughts that you have and to just live with the guilt and the consequences of your actions basically and it was just so painful. I know obviously Arthur has done some horrible, horrible things and I don't think Linda's wrong. I think he does you know have a lot of things going on inside of his brain but it's just to come from someone that cares about him, I think just hurts extra. And then we see Arthur basically going around picking a fight with anybody and doesn't have any regard for his own life. And, you know, standing in those docks with the machine gun just firing aimlessly and doesn't seem concerned if anybody starts firing back at him. Even when he goes up to, you know, the Billy Boys and is like, yeah, like, just let me out him basically. Like, let me know when I can kill this guy. Like, I really just want to get out some of this aggression and, you know, be violent towards people. And unfortunately that's how Arthur processes his feelings and with Linda out of the picture I feel like it's just gonna spiral even more. The casting in the show has always been amazing. The actor who plays Mosley I've seen in other roles but never anything really like this and he's just doing such a good job of just being so despicable like it's just so easy to hate him because he's just doing it so well in this performance where he's like over enunciating every word and every syllable. The delivery of it was just terrifyingly accurate I feel like. Obviously I wasn't around at the time but knowing about history and things that were happening and just the language he was using even in that speech and the fact that Mosley wants to start this fascist party and is blaming things on the Jews and you know is using things like our people and I feel like if you read into that you know what he's talking about and it was just terrifying to see the audience like clapping and applauding and even when he tells people like oh go tell the newspapers and then he gets you know favorable reviews and Ben saying you know, like the middle class, upper class, and lower class are all, you know, agree with what he's saying basically. And they all relate to his message and cause, which is terrifying because it's like gaining momentum and Tommy's, you know, suddenly in the minority trying to say like, okay, this guy 
is, you know, out of his mind and he's a monster, but if he's suddenly being liked by everybody, you know, that's not going to be really followed. I'm guessing the next episode would be this assassination that Tommy has planned on. Mostly, he met that guy, Barney, in the insane asylum, and from what we can tell that they fought together in the war, and Barney's been struggling with PTSD, it sounds like, and has been in this asylum ever since. And it sounds like Tommy had been writing him letters, so they had been in contact of some kind, or Arthur had been writing him letters, and now he's breaking him out to be this sniper. Apparently, he was like the best sniper on their squad, and he wants him to take out Mosley. So that was a new character, and yeah, I, I feel like that'll be uh, our season finale, the next episode. Mosley is the worst, and I will not miss him if he's not in season six, so I guess we will see what happens in the next episode. I was more interested in Tommy saying that he was going to take over the head of the fascist party, and now, especially with everything that happened to Ben Younger, like what is his motivation there? Is he hoping someone else will fill that role and he can still be an informant? Is he secretly becoming a fascist? I have no idea. It sounds like Tommy hates everything that Mosley stands for, so I can't see that being true. With Ben gone, what is his connection to this party? Like you think if Ben is gone and Mosley's gone, why would he continue being associated with this? And Lizzie was like, what are you doing with this guy? Like he's the worst. Why do have anything to be with him and when we thought it was to be an informant but like I said like if that's gone I understand Tommy's motivations to have mostly killed but I don't know what his motivations are to become you know the leader of this party unless he's trying to somehow for his own personal means break it down from the inside without reporting to anybody I guess we will find out there's only one episode left and with Mosley potentially gone in the next episode I feel like Tommy has no intentions of handing over those racetracks to the Billy Boys and obviously Mosley didn't ask him. He was just telling him to do that. And Tommy, you know, is the one who usually gives orders and doesn't take them. So he just sat there quietly and did exactly what Mosley told him to. Even when he's like, oh yeah, finish my drink for me and finish yours. Tommy's like, yeah, I'll play nice now. But when the time comes, like I'm going to be doing things in the background basically to secretly have you killed. And that's exactly what we saw was happening. It was interesting to hear Tommy try and offer up Alfie to be the source for London for the South. And then of course, uh, Jimmy was like, actually uh, Alfie's dead and Tommy's like okay I guess I was I guess he was testing to see if they knew that and then he said they'd offer up the Italians which we know was not gonna go well for Peaky Blinders so yeah I'm wondering what will happen with that situation especially if Tommy becomes the leader and just the boldness of Tommy to be standing next to the man that he's planning on having assassinated I feel like it's clever and stupid at the same time because you're putting yourself in a very very high possibility of danger if this if Barney misses by you know the tiniest amount you could also end up being killed but at the same time people are not going to think that you're the one responsible because you were literally staying next to him so how could you do it so we know Tommy usually isn't the one pulling the trigger he's just orchestrating it behind the scenes so it's definitely interesting to put himself literally next to the man he's trying to have killed it sounds like Polly didn't know that Mr. Gold was going to propose when she's you know showing off the ring to Tommy so I'm not surprised Tommy obviously orchestrated this marriage to distract Mr. Mr. Gold basically from this revenge plan and to make Polly happy maybe. It seems like Polly and him generally get along and I think Tommy knows that Mr. Gold has a crush on Polly so he's like well how can I play into this for my own advantage basically and he's set up other family members for you know business alliances as well with marriage. As we saw with John when he married Esme you know like I don't need to bridge things over so here you go you're gonna marry her. That scene when Ben died was just so painful. I was definitely Definitely fighting back tears. It was so hard to watch and I was getting very suspicious that something horrible was going to happen because we were spending too much time watching Ben in his car and he is opening this envelope and looking at it and looking at it some more and I was like okay if the shot was just to tell us that you know he's checking this evidence and that everything's in order and like checking the signature and then we're still waiting and we're still waiting and then you have the sound of that little boy you know kicking the ball against the car and that that kind of was like a jump scare in itself and Tommy watching from the window and then just the huge explosion obviously and the instant it goes off you know that Ben is not going to make it the evidence is not going to make it and unfortunately the kids surrounding them were also injured one of them passed away named Peter and I feel like Tommy took that extra hard and just holds himself responsible and even when he's talking to Ada and Ada's just like everything we touch dies she's like I can't have anybody in my life because they're going to die in some way just by being associated with us and it was just so heartbreaking to hear her think that way and I mean which is probably not wrong but it was just heartbreaking to hear it out loud 
loud. And the fact that they're gonna lie about how Ben died and say it was an IRA hit when maybe it was another informant, maybe it was the government, maybe it was somebody associated with the fascist movement, who knows, but Tommy was the one pushing Ben to get more, you know, involved with this fascist movement. So I definitely feel like Tommy, you know, that's another name on his list that he feels responsible for. And the fact that Ben didn't know that Ada was pregnant, oh my gosh, that was just extra heartbreaking and we finally hear Ada's feelings about Ben and she's like you know what I didn't love him but I liked him like I wouldn't have married him but you know he was decent and you know they probably would have stayed friends and they mentioned this section D and yeah Conflow I'm not too sure what that is or what that's in reference to but it sounds like even if this hadn't happened to Ben he would have been transferred to Johannesburg or it sounds like they would have shut down this situation altogether as obviously mostly was starting to gain favorable recognition and you know being the whistleblower on him doesn't sound like something they wanted to pursue. I'm curious if we will ever find out who tipped off the Irish that Arthur and then were coming to collect this opium as they were obviously met with you know gunfire when they arrived and if that will come back into play later on it's hard to tell there's only one episode left so I'm curious to see what storylines will be concluded which ones will continue on to the next season. I do know that season six is the last season so that's kind of making me extra anxious as we get you know the short seasons as we get to the end of this season as well. Tommy is continuing to take opium he's still talking to Grace's ghost and she seems to be encouraging him to unalive himself and to join her and even when Tommy starts the car there was kind of that you know waiting on bated breath moment of is someone gonna try and blow up Tommy's car as well like obviously he has a long list of enemies and yeah so it was just a very interesting episode. Overall I thought it was a good episode I'm very nervous going Going into the season finale and the last episode. Please no spoilers. Um, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen with Mosley. We know Tommy obviously has that plan to have him assassinated, what that's going to look like, what Tommy's involvement with the fascist party will be after that. If there will be this wedding between Mr. Gold and Polly, if Ada will have her baby, if Gina will have her baby. We still don't really know if Gina and Mosley know each other. They didn't really mention anything in this episode and I liked how they picked up this episode episode right off from the events of the previous episode. I'm glad Linda's okay, but I don't know if she will be back again. But thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for TV shows you think I should watch, please comment below. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, and check back often for more awesome content. Oh, shot in the arm. Okay, maybe she'll make it after all. Did not like that arm gesture. Yeah, he's like, I don't want people to be able to see my emotions on my face. I want to be able to have a permanent poker face, basically. She's like, I'm glad you saved me, but I don't forgive you. And the kid's playing outside too. And he had the check and everything. Oh my god. I don't know about the section D. An asylum? What is he doing here? 